Our topic for this morning is karate graph. And like you all know, basically, we have two main types of karate graph. The, the U parabola graph to the N parabola graph. These are the two main types of uh, quadratic graphs that we have discussed in the past. Yes or no? Yes, sir. And we gave you necessary information about these topics. On um, the U parabola graph, we said when you, before you can have a U graph, you must have a positive function quadratic equation. What's a positive function quadratic equation? For the U graph, you must have a positive function quadratic equation, something like a 2x squared plus 3x minus 1 is equal to 0. Why is this one a positive function? The coefficient of x squared here is positive. So there is no way you draw the graph of this function that it will not give you a u graph. For the n parabola graph, it must be a negative function. A negative function will come this way. Um, an example of that is an example of that is um, 5 minus 3x minus x squared is equal to 0. If you are having something like this, you will discover that the coefficient of x squared here is minus 1. So there is no way you draw the graph of this. It will give you an end graph. Please, let's note that for all you graphs, all you parabola graphs, students should note that the, the examiner will ask you for minimum value of y. And the other name for minimum value can be the lowest value or the least value of y. Let's note that carefully. For n graphs, the examiner will definitely ask you for maximum value of y, which can also be asked as the greatest value of y or the highest value of y. Am I still communicating? Great. For these two types of graphs, you must remember for, for whether you or n, you, you, see, you can still ask you to get the gradient. They can still ask you to get the nine of symmetry and also the roots of the equation. Many other times it could come as the root of the original equation you have drawn but they can also ask you to get the root of an equation you don't even know at all. And maybe that one will take us to um, a good example to reflect how to copy and complete the table and how to actually use the scale to draw our graph. I want to emphasize the place of scale. Please, students, interpret your scale well. Am I communicating? Yes, sir. Class, interpret your scale well. When you want, after completing your table, the next attention should be, what is the scale? Your next attention should be, what is the scale? If you say two centimeters represents one unit, what does it mean? 
two centimeters to represent five units. What does it mean? Interpret because when you don't interpret well, even with the right graph, your readings will also be wrong because you don't know the interpretation of the scale for the graph. I want to believe I'm communicating. Can we take the first question from my end here? Let's take the first question. Okay, copy and complete the table of values below. Copy and complete the table of values below for the function for the function y is equal to s squared minus two x minus two. For the function y is equal to s squared minus two x minus two. Okay, I'll put the table on the board. Are we together? Yes. Okay, after that table, then B part, that's the A part of the question. B part of that question says, using a scale of two centimeters to one unit. Using a scale of two centimeters to one unit on the x-axis. Using a scale of two centimeters to one unit on the x-axis. And two centimeters to five units on the y-axis. Using a scale of two centimeters to one unit on the x-axis and two centimeters to five units on the y-axis. Comma, draw the graph of y is equal to s squared minus two x minus two. Draw the graph of y is equal to s squared minus two x minus two. Are we good? See, use your graph to find, use your graph to find one. The root of the equation s squared minus 2x minus 2 is equal to 0. Use your graph to find one. The root of the equation s squared minus 2x minus 2 is equal to 0. Two. Two. The values of x for which, the values of x for which s squared minus 2x minus 4 and a half is equal to 0. The values of x for which s squared minus 2x minus 4 and a half is equal to 0. 3. The equation of the line of symmetry. The equation of the line of symmetry. The equation of the line of symmetry of the curve. Four. Four. Of course, the after the questions we are getting now, there are additional questions from me. The examiner will not overload you on that question. You are actually spending. 12, maximum of 15 minutes on each question. So the question you have written is basically the question the examiner is asking you. 
but I needed to add one or two questions to it so that we can stretch the length and the breadth of this topic. If for one reason or the other, the, we have variations in our question, we should still be able to answer them. Am I still communicating? Yes, sir. Great. So, number what now? Number four. four. Find the gradient of the curve at point x is equal to 2. Find the gradient of the curve at point x is equal to 2. 5. The maximum value of y. 5. The maximum value of y and the corresponding value of x. Six, she? Six, is that correct? Six. The range of values of x, the range of values of x, for which, for which s squared minus two x minus seven is less than zero. For which s squared minus two x minus seven is less than zero. Seven. Root of the equation s squared minus 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. Root of the equation s squared minus 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. 8. 8. The value of x for which y is least. The value of x for which y is least. 9. 9. Range of values of x when y is decreasing. Range of values of x when y is decreasing. All right. I think my students, are we good? Students, are we good? Oh, great. So let's take it one after the other. Quickly, our concentration is important. Let our attention be here so that uh, we will not need to be repeating ourselves because we lost attention. Pay attention to anything that seems confusing. That is why you are here. That is why we are here. And we must be on the same page. Thank you. All right, can we swing into action? The, the first aspect of this question says we should copy and complete the table. Principally, uh, there are two ways to do that. But for me, over time, I think I, I'm comfortable with substitution method. That is, I want to write my equation out. And I have just five. One, two, three, four, five. Five values that are important to me. But the other method, you will need to do everything. Yes or no? We are talking about time management now. There are two methods. Both will give you the right result. But which one will give you, uh, which one will actually make you to manage your time better? It's a substitution method. But please, students, if you are comfortable with the first one, and this one, this substitution, you are not comfortable with it, use the method you are comfortable with. Is that taking? Great. I'll, I'll, I'll take it over from here. When x is minus 3, what will be my y? That is what the question is saying. y should be minus 3 squared minus 2 into minus 3 minus 2. This is 9. This is 6. This is 2. Oh, this is minus 2. 9 plus 6. Ah. 9 plus 6? 15. 15. 15 minus 2. This is 9 plus 6 minus 2. How did I get 9? Minus, time, minus 3 times minus 3 gives me plus 9. Minus times minus 3 gives me plus. 2 times 3 gives me 6. The minus 2 is not tampered with, so we are still having minus 2. So we have 15 minus 2, that is 13. Please remember to put it in the box. It is copy and complete what? The table. The table. This is the table. You must copy and complete it. For the exam you are writing, make life easy for you. You don't have to rewrite it again because it's already right in. 
It's already, so you don't have to rewrite the table again. All you need to do is solve. Manage that space carefully where it's solved and put the answer in the table. Great. Can we take the second one very quickly? X is equal to minus 2. You have what? You have y to be equal to minus 2 squared minus 2 into minus 2 minus 2. This is 4 plus 4 minus 2. That's 6. Shay? When x minus 1, you have y is equal to minus 1 squared minus 2 into minus 1 minus 2. Shay? This is 1 plus 2. Minus 2. 1. When x is equal to what now? When x is 1, y should be 1. Squared minus 2 into 1 minus 2. This is 1 minus 2 minus 2. This is minus 3. Shape? And the last one. Where can I manage? Okay. I will rub it off, but uh, I'll rub it off, but um, I think we need this space also. Why when y is what? Sorry, when x is two. When x is two, y should be two squared minus two into two. Minus 2, Shay? Yes, okay, this is 4, minus 4, minus 2, minus 2. Right? Yes, so this is minus 2. This is minus 2. Our table is done. How many minutes is that? That's not, that we have not taken more than two minutes to complete that table. If we know what we are doing, as we work, we also watch your time. Students, as we work, we should also watch our time. Very important. All right. With that, we can swing into graph. So I will clean that side. I want to, oh, okay, let me use this side. I'll use this side for my graph. So I want to clean this table. Have you written it? Okay. So this can go. Class, this can go. The next question says, you are given a scale, right? Yes, sir. What's the scale? Two centimeters to one unit. Two centimeters to one unit. Have you? Yes, X axis. Then? Five units. I what? I will see. All right. I would. I want to use this space as my Cartesian plane. Our values of x started from where? Minus four, right? Okay. That represents my Cartesian plane. This is my own graph page now. Obviously, this is my y-axis. And what's the highest value of y? The lowest value of y? Minus 3. Minus three. So where do you need more values or more space? The positive? These are things we need to check before you place your x-axis. Hey, you don't have to look down now. Please, can we look at, uh, can you look straight to my face? When you want to place your axis, check the values before you place them. So that you will not be doing what you should do at once. You will not be doing it two, three times. And it's still mismanagement of time. So, I need more space. 
on the y axis. I mean, on the positive y axis. axis. All right. So that means I can say if, it, if I'm using a graph book, I will have counted my two two centimeter. The, every big box, red, the red very big box. If you are using the red paper or red uh, graph sheet, the red big box is a two centimeter and it's a square. Yes or no? Yes. We are all the size are what? Equal. Equal. Okay. So you should, you can count the boxes and make sure. But on the y axis, two centimeter. If this is my two centimeter, is five units, and I need minimum of twenty two there. Shea. Label your axis. It's important. Label your axis. Write your scale. It's important. You can see those instructions. Please, these are things that make students to lose mark in the exam. Label your axis. Write your scale. Very important. On the x axis, two centimeters to one unit. Oh, we are good to go now, right? Great. Can we pick the points from my audience now? Thank you. When x is minus 4, y is 22. I'll be using dotted line. To trace that line because I'm using a plain, a plain board, I'm not using my graph. Students, you are not supposed to use any broken line at all. Your lines have been ruled. So don't use any broken line at all. You just trace the line of minus 4, you want to locate 22. Okay, maybe before I move into that graph, picking points on the graph, can we break the scale down? Breaking the scale down so that we will know what we have carefully. On the y axis, 2 centimeters, how many ohms? Tiny ohms. 10 ohms. 2 centimeters represents 5 units, which is 10 ohms to 5 units. Right? 10 ohms to 5 units, right? Yes, sir. If it is 10 ohms to 5 units, then 1 ohm here will be 5 over 10, which is 1 over 2. Right? Yes, That's for y axis. Please, this is important. This is y axis. And for x axis, 2 centimeter is also 10 ohms. To what? To 1 unit. 1 ohm will be 1 over 10, which is 0 0.1. And this is representing the breakdown of scale for x axis. Please, all these, they are important things. We, students, my students must know how to do very well. Not for quadratic graph alone, for all graphs. They are basic things you must know how to do to analyze your graph very well. All right. So I'll go. I need 22. This is 20. Each tiny, tiny O is 0.5. How many O's will I move up to get, to get 22 now? Four. Four. So please, your tiny, 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 tiny O's, you are moving four to get 22. I hope I'm communicating. The next one is what? Minus three? 13. 13. Okay? This is my minus three. Like I said, you are not supposed to use any broken line. After 10, how many tiny, tiny O's will I move? Six. Six. 
if, if uh, okay, six. Let's take six. That's my 13. That about? Yes. Minus two. Minus one is one. Minus two. Minus two is six. Six. That's two O's after. Two tiny O's, Shay. Yes? Minus one is one. Minus one is one. That's just Yes? Zero is minus two. Minus two is, it will be four holes down after zero. Yes, now, four holes down after zero on the y axis. Yes? One is minus three. Minus three will be six. Uh, and zero is what? Minus two. Okay, so. Yes? Two is minus two. Yes? Three is one. Yes? Four is six. It is after getting all your points together, you are supposed to join these points together with either your broom strand. You can use free hand if you are good at um, making curves freely with your hand without creating problem with the smoothness of the curve, or you can use your French curve. So there, these are the three options you have. But you must be after a smooth and presentable curve. So let's try and get one here with my free hand. You've been able to get, this is what your curve should look like as much as possible. Then, Okay. I want to believe my students are ready with their own call. Yes, Great. After drawing your curve, please, the equation of this curve should also reflect. Should also reflect on the curve. That's the equation of the curve. 
Are we good? Yes. Can we take the first question on that right now? The root of the equation s squared minus what? S squared, the root of, that's the first question there. S squared minus 2x minus 2 is equal to 0. What is the equation of the graph? Y is equal to S squared minus 2x minus 2, right? Yes, okay, if you can connect these two now carefully, you will discover that the equation of the, the equation of your graph is y is equal to s squared minus 2x minus 2. And they are asking you to find the root of s squared minus 2x minus 2. The equations are this, the same, yes or no. Okay, I can connect them carefully by saying if this is removed, it's still the same thing as what? Y. So I can imply here that y is equal to 0. What is the line of y is equal to 0 on the graph? Your line of y is equal to 0 on the graph is the x-axis, which is, this is y is equal to 0. The x-axis, I, I said that severally. Your x-axis is the line of y is equal to 0. Y, your y-axis is the line of, is the line of what? Your y-axis is the line of x is equal to 0. Your x-axis is the line of y is equal to 0. Please, let's note that again. It's important. Okay? It is, we are now looking at this. The solution here comes as the intersection between this y, the line of y is equal to 0, and the curve. Where are they intersecting? It's intersecting here, 1 and 2. Can somebody help us and read those values out? So we are saying your answer is x is equal to minus 0 0.7 and x is equal to 2.7. Okay, that's the solution to the first question. The next question. That's number two. The values of x for which s squared minus 2x minus 4 and a half is equal to what? Zero. Is equal to zero. If you are looking at this, please, as much as possible, our attention should be here. If you are looking at this, sometimes ago, we have taken this topic and I called your attention to the fact that I will see this equation as an unknown equation because it's not known to me before. And I will see this equation as my known equation. Then I just brought out an expression or an equation for myself that says y is equal to the known equation minus the unknown equation. My aim here is to actually get a straight line that is that a straight line graph that is y is equal to something. And I'm using this as my own apply, I mean as my own approach to get that straight line that will solve the problem for me. Can we take this over? Taking it over, we have y is equal to s squared minus 2x minus 2 minus into s squared. I'll have to clean this line. minus into s squared minus 2x minus 4 and a half, right? Yes. This is the known equation. This is the unknown equation. He said the known equation minus unknown. Let's simplify further. This will be s squared minus 2x minus 2 minus s squared plus 2x plus 4 and a half, right? Yes, sir. Simplifying further, this will take this, right? This will also take this. Then I will have y is equal to minus 2 plus 4 and a half. What's that? 2 and a half. It implies that y is equal to 2 and a half. What does this mean? What does this mean? It means you 
you have to look at square y is equal to two and a half on the y axis. On the y axis. When you look at y is equal to two and a half on the y axis. This is this is why this is the middle way between zero and five is two and a half, right? Yeah. So after locating that, put your ruler. Put your ruler at that point and let there be a broken line. That will pass through that y is equal to two and a half. And on this right y is equal to two and a half. Let your examiner know the equation of that straight line. Right y is equal to two and a half. Then whatever that broken line meets with the curve, trace it to x axis. One. Whatever it meets with the curve, again, trace it to x axis. Two. And read the values out. Somebody is saying our answer is x is equal to minus 1.4 and x is equal to 3.4. Can I get confirmation from others? Yes, sir. Okay, few, few people are responding. I want others to check. The straight line passes through the x axis and is parallel to y axis. The equation of that line will be x is equal to a particular constant. Am I communicating? Yes, sir. So, that straight line that we are after now must have an equation. I've said to you, you don't, even though I gave you a formula, but that formula should help you to quickly solve your problem. It should not be a formula you have to write inside your answer sheet. I will use that first to actually break the backbone of the question. The equation of the line of symmetry has a formula that says x is equal to minus b over 2a. If you use this any time, no matter how nasty that quadratic equation may be, it will make you to learn safely. And for this question, my b is what? Thank you. My a is what? One. Your c is what? Your c is minus 2. So please, let's know how to identify constant in quadratic equation because you may also be asked, you say using quadratic formula, solve the equation, so, 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 so. If you identify A, B, and C wrongly, then you'll be using your quadratic formula wrongly. Some people call it almighty formula, but I don't see what is almighty there. I cannot call any formula almighty. The only almighty that I know is God. So when you want to say something is almighty, the only God that should be called Almighty. That formula cannot threaten us. So it can't be called Almighty. It's a quadratic formula. And it's as easy as other formulas. So please don't let, don't let the Almighty that people say that formula is to begin to scare you. It is a normal formula that we can use to solve our problem. All right. Can we substitute very fast and see? We have what? x is equal to minus into minus 2 over 2 into 1. And that is what? Which is what? So x is equal to 1. This is telling you off record that x is equal to 1. So you just go to your graph, locate where x is 1. And I'm still getting some murmuring. Locate x is equal to 1 and put your ruler there, and let there be a broken line that is going through x is equal to 1, telling your examiner that is the line, thank you, that is the line of symmetry. With that, you write x is equal to 1. Are you with me? Yeah. As soon as you have done that, your problem is solved. Tell your examiner, equation of line of symmetry is x is equal to 1. Please never show this to your examiner because you are, you are actually using formula now, but you can use it to outsmart your examiner so that you can get the direction easily. That x is equal to 1 from this formula gives you necessary direction on the, on the graph. And locating it, writing x is equal to 1 out, it is, it's, you, have, you have actually done what the examiner asked you to do. Then tell them the, nine of, the equation of 9 of symmetry just x is equal to 1. And you have succeeded in dividing that curve 
into two equal halves. Okay? But if, um, if you have done the right thing on your graph, can you measure the distance between the two roots very fast? Measure your distance between the two roots. And I will use somebody as a case study. Who is measuring com correctly for all? The distance between the two roots. Somebody say something out to me. Six point. Okay. If you are only six point five, what is the half of six point five? Three point. Is it three point two five or three point two or three point three? Please, can you measure from your left root to this point? And let's see. Measure from this left root to this line of symmetry. Eh? So, is it not the half of the distance between the two roots? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you can also get the you can also get the line of symmetry without going through this stress by measuring the distance between the two roots, divide it by two, and measure again that half distance. Wherever it lands, put your ruler there and let the broken line go through. You have gotten the line of symmetry. If those two things are escaping your mind, the last thing you can do is this. The two roots, what are they? Help me. Come on. The two roots. Minus 0 0.7. Minus 0 0.7 and what? 2.7. You are sure? Yes. Okay, can you add it together? Minus 0 0.7 plus 2.7. Two divided by two. One. Come on. That's when x is equal to one. That's nine of symmetry. Can somebody appreciate me for that? One? <laughs> so you cannot be stranded. If the goal, if, if one is not working, the other one should up. Work. Alright, can we move forward now? I can wrap this up very fast. Yes, sir. Yes, what's the next? Find the gradient of the curve at point x is equal to. The gradient of the curve at point x is equal to what? Two. How do we say we should find gradient? Maybe we have forgotten. Gradient is the same thing as the y, the x, is the same thing as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is also the same thing as the slope of a particular curve at that particular, I mean, at that particular point. Am I still communicating? Yes, sir. Now, if that is what we are focusing on, that we want to get the gradient of this curve when x is equal to 2, the first thing you locate is where is x equal to 2. This is x equal to 2. Right? Yes, sir. After locating x equal to 2, put your ruler and trace it down to that point. So I have the point already. I don't have to struggle. That point of x equal to 2 is also on the curve. Then you must get a tangent. You must get what? A tangent to that point, x is equal to 2. What is the tangent? I will always give you my own layman definition because, of course, you can still get definition of a target on the internet and it may not help the situation we have today. But when I give you my definition, it will solve my problem because a definition that I give to you should actually help my students to solve their immediate problem. So the target we are talking about is a straight line that passes through only one point on the external part of a curve or a circle. Now we have a curve. And the point we are dealing with is point at 2. Right? Yes, so you are setting your ruler in a way that the line, the target you are, you are getting is actually passing through that point alone. If I may try that here, I will have something like this.
okay, you are not supposed, obviously, I think my students know that we are not using free hand to draw a target. I hope, I hope that is obvious. Okay? But the situation, this is the best I can get. Or let me try and get something. Okay. I think I'm getting something better. Then, after getting your tagging, you use the tagging to form a right angle. A right angle what? right angle triangles. Please, let's also note, I will also remind the base of my triangle to have a resting base. So I prefer this configuration because this will be my y2, this place will be my y1, and wherever y1 is, I'll put s2 there, and this will be my x1. Am I communicating? Yes, sir. Placing that on the graph, this place will be my what? Y what? Y what? This place will be y what? Come on, that's correct. And this place will be what? X, Y. All right. How do we get Y2? You trace this point to Y axis. This point Y1 to Y axis. This point X2 to X axis. This point X1 to X axis. Can somebody help us and tell us if you are sure of your values, tell us your values. And let's, let's use your value as a case study. Who is volunteering? Yes. Y2, yeah, Y2, okay, your own, if it's, if it's not compulsory, your value should be everybody's value. Who is giving me a value? Y2, okay, you are sure? 2.5, okay, Y1, minus 10. X2, S2, four. Four. four, okay, X1, this is where the test of whether you can read values from, from your graph using the scale given, who, who, no, I can't take your value again, I must take his value, S1, Minus 2.3. Okay, that's somebody's, uh, these are somebody's values. Let's um, substitute now. The gradient will now be y2 minus y1. That is 2.5 minus into minus 10 over s24 minus, minus 2.3. This is 12.5 over 6 point what? Three. And what is the value of this? One point what? Okay, thank you. 1.98. Okay, that's somebody's gradient. But what's the actual value of the gradient? If you find the y, the x, the y, the x of, if y is equal to, S squared minus 2x minus 2. The y the s will be 2x minus 2. Right? Yes, so when x is equal to 2, gradient will now be 2 into 2 minus 2. This is 4 minus 2, and that is 2. So the person that got 1.98 should be appreciated. Please, can you put your hands together powerfully for him? <laughs> now, 
that's a good one. 1.98 has just reflected that uh, the actual, so if, if he's putting this to the nearest O number, that's what? Two. And that shows he has actually worked on his tagging closely well. He has also tried and he has gotten the right angle. Anybody with two? Anybody with two? Okay, I have students. You got two exactly. Nobody. Okay. Okay. Anybody with 1.99? 1.99. Another person is 1.98. Anybody 1.9? Okay. One for another 1.98. 1.97. All right. 1.9. Let me jump. 1.9. Okay, I have 1.9 there. 1.8. Anybody with 1.8? Okay? Anybody with 1.4? If, you, if your answer is 1, anything below 1.5, is not correct. Some people are looking at me. You did not do it. You are looking at me. I should do it for you, Abby. Oh. Okay, be looking at me. You don't have to look at me. It is as much as possible. Do it yourself is the action. You can see some people are bending down to do the work. Do it yourself is what? Is, is what is needed here. Because nobody will help you in the exam. Do it yourself is the way out. All right. Can we move forward now? Can we move forward now? Next question. The maximum value of y and the corresponding value of x. Now you should not look down. Now you should not look down. You should look up now. The maximum value of x and the corresponding value, I mean the maximum value of y and the corresponding value of x. When we started this morning, I told you that a u curve will normally have what? Minimum value. And n curve normally have what? The U, the U curve will have minimum value of Y. The N curve will have maximum value of Y. But this question is asking us to find the maximum value is a U curve. The only thing that can exist, if it is a U curve, is the minimum value of Y, then it can have the corresponding value of X. If it is minimum value of Y, how do we get that? You just go to the turning point and trace it to Y. What is this value from you? This should be minus 3 or something. Yes, eh? yes, Corresponding value of x is what? Corresponding value of x it should be y. Yes, one. Corresponding value of x should be what? One. Uh -huh. So that is minimum value. Minimum value of y is minus 3. Corresponding value. of x is 1. The next question. The range of values of x for which x, x squared minus 2x minus 7 is less than 0. x squared minus 2x minus 7 is less than 0. We need this if, 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 if bigger space there. What did I say? The maximum value of this curve is? Thank you. What did I say the maximum value of this curve is? When it is a, a, an end curve and they're asking for minimum value, what does this mean? It does not exist. Please, let that be noted carefully as much as possible. They want to find the range of values of x for which x squared minus 2x minus 7 is less than 0. The first thing you do he turned this one, this is an inequality equation, turn it to an equality equation. So x squared minus 2x minus 7 is equal to 0. This become the approach here now becomes the formal approach we use. I will be seeing this as an unknown equation. So y will be the known equation minus the unknown 
equation. The known equation is s squared minus 2x minus 2 minus into the unknown now is my s squared minus 2x minus 7. Are we still together? Yes, so simplifying this further, I have s squared minus 2x minus 2 minus s squared plus 2x plus 7. This will take this, this take this, and I have y is equal to minus 2 plus 7, which is 5. y is equal to 5. You go to where y is equal to 5 on your on, on the y address. And let me use my black pen. I have this now. I write y is equal to 5 here. Whenever it touches the curve, Trace it back to x axis. It touches the curve, yeah? Back to x axis. It touches the curve, yeah? Back to x axis. Are we together? Yes. And, and it is after, you have to get these two values for me. Please, somebody should get those two values for me. X should be equal to minus minus 1.8 and x is equal to 3.8. But that is not our final position. If you remember, you started from an inequality equation. So we must put this, uh, these values in a particular range using the two values we have gotten. And that would be x. Which one is smaller here? So it will be x will be greater than minus 1.8 and it's less than 3.8. This is the range of values of x for which that is less than 0. Am I communicating? Yes, sir. Am I still communicating? Yes, sir. Great. The next question. Hey. I'll, yes. So, I'll hold it. Yes. No. Why is it not equal to? Because this does not have equal to. If it has equal to, then this will have equal to, this will have equal to. Are we communicating? Thank you. Yes. Which of the equation is x squared minus 2x plus 2 equals 0? x squared minus 2x plus 2. Can I rub this off, class? Yes, Can I rub it off, class? Yes, I think that should be simp simple for us to manage now. If I s squared what? Minus 2x. Oh, OK. Let's quickly check it. I think I, I remember why I included it. Let's quickly check that. This is also an unknown equation. Y will be s squared minus 2x minus 2 minus into s squared minus 2x plus 3 using the approach of y is equal to the known equation minus what? Unknown, unknown equation. This will be s squared minus 2x minus 2 minus s squared plus 2x minus 3. This take this. This take that, and I have y is equal to minus 5. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So wherever we locate minus 5 on the y axis, go there. This is y is equal to minus 5. And let your line pass through that. And write on that line, y is equal to minus 5. Tell your examiner the straight line you have drawn is the straight line of y is equal to minus 5. What is the root of this equation? If for one reason or the other, you have a line that is not passing through the curve, and it will never pass through the curve, even when the curve is extended. Even if you keep extending this curve, this line will never pass through the curve. In such situation, the root of this equation is called imaginary root. Please note that, or complex root or 
complex truth. So there is virtually nothing you want to read on this. It's saying that the answer to that is imaginary root or complex root. Am I still communicating? Yes. All right. The value of x for which y is least. Well, what does that mean? We have done that. If you have the right interpretation to that question. The value of x for which y is least means the same thing as the value of x for which y is minimum. So it's saying what is the corresponding value of x at the minimum value of y? What is it? 1. What is it now? 1. Yes or no? Yes. Next question. Range of values of x. Range of values of x when y is decreasing. Look up. Look up, suspend whatever you are writing and look up. The range of values of x, if you are not careful with this question, you will misinterpret it. The range of values of x for which y is what? You, it is, you answer the question by yourself. You will look at what I'm doing. If I'm moving down on this curve like this, check what is happening to y. This is point 20 what? This point is what? This point is what? This point is what? This point is what? Zero point, minus zero point something, no? Abby? Is it not minus zero point something? Talk to me. This point. Oh, sorry. It's the, it's the root of the equation. Sorry. So this point. Then the next one is this point. Abby? This point. Yes. Okay. Let's check it again. From this point is 20 what? What is happening to values of y? Is it increasing? Decreasing. Yes. After, after this one, after this one, this is, this is, uh, this is what? Six. This is, this is minus two. Okay, let's write it out. You have 22, 13, six, one, Uh -uh. Okay, okay, 22, 13, 6, 1, minus 2, minus 3, uh-huh. Minus 2, 3, minus Let's check. Is decreasing here. 22, 13, 6, 1. Minus 2. Is it, is it still decreasing? Yes. Minus three. Is it still decreasing? Yes. No. no. It's picking up again. Yes. Value of y is doing what? No. It's picking up here again and it's going up. So you stop here. So these are the values of y. But they say what are the values of x for which y is what? So what are the val corresponding values of x here? Somebody is saying two again. Is, will two be there? No. Is it, is, are they asking for range of values or just say values? Range. And you can, you can, it's either you write it as minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, one, or you can say, you can say uh, x is greater than or equal to minus four, less than or equal to one. This, this, hello? Are we together? Yes, Are we still together? Yes, when you get the set, this is set of values. This is range of values. So I prefer this, uh, your answer to be written this way. Whatever it is, you have told your examiner you are smarter. Hello, hello. 
you after writing it this way, put it in a range. Tell it then this is the range of value. You have written out your set of values of x now. I can put it in that range. Am I communicating? But if I remove this one, is it correct? No, it's not. So please, note, be careful of the way you present your answer so that you will not have issues in maximizing your marks. Oh, great. That means for this, for this question, we are done. Thank you.